In Creo Simulate, you can use pressure loads in your structural analyses. Let's take a look at setting those up. Here I have an assembly open for a pressure vessel. Before I jump into Creo Simulate, I'm going to take a look at creating a cross section that'll help me select the different surfaces. Here I've got a cross section. I just used the X direction. That looks good. Let me change its name and hit the check mark. And I'll use this for selecting the surfaces. Now to get over to simulate, you'll go to the applications menu. Here is simulate over here. Normally I make sure I have my own, all my different materials assigned first, then do my constraints. Let's jump right to defining our pressure. So I'll click on the pressure icon from the home tab. Here we have our name of our load and the load set. Let's call this the constant pressure load, since this is what this one will be. Now we have our load sets over here. Here we can select our different surfaces. You can select all the boundaries or intent surfaces. In this particular situation, I am going to pick them one by one. And it's automatically when I'm selecting one half of the cylindrical surface, it's grabbing the other one automatically. So that's good for my different surfaces. Here you can change to using different surface sets if you want to use some of the advanced construction methods like loop surfaces or seed and boundary. But I'm just selecting them one by one. And for this first load case, I am just going to use a constant pressure. From this drop down list, you can change what set of units that you want to use. So, for example, let's say that I want to do it in atmospheres instead of the model units. Then I can type in the value. Let's say that we're going to simulate 20 atmospheres of pressure inside of the vessel. When I click the preview button, you can see the way that the pressure is going to enact. And the big difference between a pressure load and a force moment load is that a pressure load always acts normal to the surfaces that you have selected. This is good for this particular load set, so I will click the OK button. And you can see it previewed on the computer screen. Let's go to the model tree. I will expand loads constraints. Here you can see load set one, and this is the constant pressure load. I'm going to select this one and hide it so it's no longer visible on the computer screen. For the second load, I want to simulate a hydrostatic pressure. In other words, we're going to have a liquid in here. So as you get deeper into the pressure vessel, there's going to be higher pressure. And in order to do this, I need to create some construction geometry. Let me start off by making some stuff visible. Let me select this component over here. I'm going to right click and open it up just to make sure that I have a vertical axis visible. Let me see. Oh, that's the one that I want. Let me hit the show button. So this is an axis that I will use for constructing the geometry. Now let's create this. If you take a look here on the screen, this is the world coordinate system. It's located down at the bottom. To construct this pressure load that is going to be a function of coordinates, I'm going to create some geometry up over here. When you are in Creo Simulate, you can go to the Refine Model tab in order to create your datum geometry. And be aware when you create it in Creo Simulate, it only exists here in Simulate. It's not going to be created in Creo Parametric unless you promote it afterwards. So let's create a datum point. It's asked me to select the component where I want it to be created. At the assembly level is good, so I will click the OK button. I'm going to create it at the intersection of this axis. Hold down the control key and select the surface, and that's good. So I will click the OK button. And with the point still selected, I will create a coordinate system. Again, it asks me at what level do I want to create this coordinate system, and the assembly level is good. Now we have the origin. By the way, from this drop down list, you can change it to be a cylindrical or a spherical coordinate system, but Cartesian is fine. I'm really only interested in having a direction along that axis. So let's click in the collector to define the orientation. I will select this datum axis here, and I'll use that to define the y direction. 
Right now, Y is pointing up. You might be able to see that. I'm going to flip it so it points down. And to define the other directions, I really don't care about them. Let's just use the default coordinate system and I'll use X to define the X direction. So now I've got the orientation of the new coordinate system over here. But again, the important thing is that the Y direction is pointing down. All right, let's click the OK button out of here. I've got my new coordinate system visible on the computer screen. If I expand the simulation features folder in the model tree, here you can see that datum point and here's the coordinate system. You'll notice with the coordinate system selected, if I go to the datum drop down menu, promote is grayed out. For some reason, you're not allowed to promote coordinate systems, but if I select the datum point feature, I can promote that to be available at the part level. All right, let's create our new pressure load. Let's go back to the home tab and I will choose pressure. And here we have it. Let me call this hydrostatic. And for this one, I'm going to put it in a new load set. I'm not going to change the name. And now for the surfaces, I will select these same surfaces as before, holding down the control key. And let's see, you get a few more in here. There we go. That is good. Uh, next up, for having this being a hydrostatic pressure load, you're going to go to the advanced button and then it'll give you this spatial variation drop down list. Instead of having it be uniform, I'm going to choose it to be a function of coordinates. And here's where you can specify your function by clicking on the F of X button. And for our function, you can select any pre-existing functions that you have in the model. I don't have any, so I will click the new button to create one. And for the function over here, let me call this my hydrostatic pressure function. You can write a description in here. Now for the coordinate system I'm using to define this, rather than the world coordinate system, I'm going to use that coordinate system that I just created. Let me select it right out of the model tree. For the definition of your function, you can either do it symbolically or by a table of values. I'm going to enter in a symbolic expression. If you know what you want it to be, you can just type it directly in here. You can also go to available function components if you want. And for this one, I, it's, it's a matter of the Y function for me. Now, let's talk about how you define the function over here. By the way, I'm just going to click the Y so it gets pasted in here in the expression. And then let's use the multiply over here. And that gets pasted in there. That's all I need from in here. But be aware that, again, you, have, you can use a combination of the X, Y, and Z variables. Here we have constants for pi and E. We have all our different standard math operators, including ones for equal to, not equal to. So you could actually even write an if then else statement in there if you wanted something that was piecewise continuous. And here we have all the different functions that are available to you. So you've got your trigonomic functions, you've got max and min and some other stuff inside of here. So let's close. That's all I need out of the symbolic operators. Now in terms of what I want to multiply y times, well, I had to do a little math. And for doing math, it's always convenient to use PTC MathCAD for your engineering calculations. Let's hop over to that to take a look at the function that I'm going to use. All right, here's the math that I did for my hydrostatic pressure load. I'm using the density of heavy fuel oil over here. The function for the pressure as a function of the height is equal to the density times the acceleration due to gravity times the height. So what I want to multiply the Y value by is this rho times G. And I want to express this in pounds per square inch. And I know that my assembly model is in millimeters. So this is the value that I want to multiply y times. Now that I know that, let's go over to Creo Parametric and plug that in. All right, so just click in my symbolic expression field. Let me type in the value that I want. And again, this is going to be in PSI per millimeter. And 
then I can click the OK button out of the function definition. It's warning me that, hey, you define a function that is not dimensionless. If you change the principal system of units in your model, the function may evaluate differently and lead to incorrect results. This is something that you want to pay attention to. So for example, if I change my model from millimeters to centimeters to inches, whatever, this symbolic expression is not going to update automatically. All right, let's click OK out of there. Here's my list of functions that I have available. Let's click the OK button out of there. And then I'm going to change this drop down list to be in PSI, since that is what I calculate the value for. And then I'm going to use a unit value over here. So again, now it's going to multiply the Y value relative to the coordinate system times this particular function. Again, you can click on the preview button, and indeed, this is showing up the way that we would expect. It's going to be a minimum, minimal value here, and as the height or the distance from the coordinate system increases, the pressure is going to increase as well. So that looks good. I can click the OK button. And now I have my second pressure load defined inside of here. Let's take a look, expanding loads and constraints. And then I created it in a different load set. And that way I could choose which load set I want to use in my analysis later on. Or you can use a combination of different load sets. And then when you are evaluating the results, you can choose which load sets you want to contribute to the results. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.